Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I am Arif, your Cloud Learning Journey Partner. Well, today's video is very special because today we will learn how to secure our cloud environment. We will talk about AWS Web Application Firewall. In short, we can call it WAF. So security is a big part in cloud because whenever we're moving our data to the cloud, our main concern is whether our data is secure in cloud. So uh, today we'll uh, talk about AWS WAF, we'll learn a tons of stuff and after finishing this video, you will be able to answer any question related to AWS WAF. So without further delay, let's get started. So I have logged into my AWS account and from here, from the search menu, we have to look for WAF. So this is the one, WAF and Shield. I'm gonna open this in a new tab in here and from the left panel you can see it have multiple subsection it has web ACL it has bot control it has IP set so a tons of information but first we're gonna start our uh, video by creating our web ACL okay so uh, let me first uh, talk about what is web ACL. So web ACL is uh, a security mechanism that works in uh, network in the layer seven. So it's an application layer. So if uh, we have a web server that is serving uh, uh, website related traffic, then uh, we must uh, integrate this web ACL with that EC2 server or the load balancer. Suppose you have multiple web servers and uh, a load balancer is uh, controlling the traffic at the back end, then we can integrate the load balancer with this uh, web ACL. So we'll learn about it. So uh, first we need to uh, name it. Let's uh, call it test uh, SEL. Okay, and description is optional. We can uh, ignore this one. Then the CloudWatch metric name, we just uh, use the name. So it was automatically generated in here. That is good. And here we do have two options under the resource type. One is uh, Amazon CloudFront distribution. Suppose we have a CloudFront distribution and we want to protect our resource using the, uh, these web SELs and we can go for this option that is the cloud front distribution and the second one is the regional resources that is uh, can that can be application load balancer API gateway and AWS sync or graph QL APIs so what why we do have two options if we see closely in here the first one the cloud front is not regional based so it's a, it's a, it doesn't depend on a single region that's why it's a separate section but the other resources like the alb api gateway um, app sync graphql apis everything is uh, regional so we have to define it within a region maybe north virginia oregon or any region that we want to so that's why we do have two options in here Okay, great. So now uh, let's uh, put the name again. When I change the type, uh, the name is gone. So let's call it test SEO once again. Okay, so that's that part. Then the body size limit. So let's go with the default one. We don't have any specification for now. That's why we're gonna go with the default one. So after that, in this section associate aws resources so suppose uh, we already have some resources that we're planning to attach as we have selected cloudfront so here if i click add aws resources it's looking for the cloudfront distributions but uh, i haven't created a cloudfront distribution because it's not this in the scope of this tutorial so if we had the CloudFront distributions under our AWS account, it will show right here. We could just select it and attach or integrate the CloudFront distribution with our uh, web, web SEL. So let's move on. We will uh, integrate it later in uh, our next upcoming videos. I'll use this one. Okay, now let's go to the next section. So here we have a few sections we need to cover. The first one is that rule. So uh, when we create a web ACL, it's a it's an empty place. But uh, here we can uh, have multiple rules. So these rules will uh, be used to actually filter our traffic. So it's a kind of like a firewall, we could say. 
So if I click add rules, we do, here we do have two options too. One is add managed rule groups or the second option is to add my own rules and rule groups. So we can also customize and came up, come up with our own rules and rules groups. So uh, for the sake of the video, let's uh, look into the add managed rule groups. Okay. So this is a very fun part here you can see some we have multiple subsections one section it's showing as aws managed rule groups then some uh, other vendors of rule groups okay so uh, let's look into the aws managed for most of the project i usually go with the aws one because the aws one is pretty much uh, covers everything that we need if we look closely in here so this is a bot control. This is a very good one, okay. And for every every sort of uh, rules, you see some numbers, the capacity. And uh, if I go back to show you one very specific thing, that is, the total WCU for a web ACL can't exceed five thousand using over. 1500 wcu affects your cost so we know that uh, this uh, whenever we accumulate multiple uh, web ACU, then uh, it may uh, charge us more so for that reason whenever we are creating a web acl uh, rule or selecting one we need to closely look into this number okay so uh add manage rule let's look into aws managed one so this one is a good one that is account takeover prevention so it's a uh, capacity is 50 which is way below and uh, here we see the additional fees like ten dollar per month prorated hourly okay and one dollar per thousand login attempt analyzed so it's a more of a like pay as you go service so we are paying whatever we're using that's good and then the bot controls so it's a very a critical one so if our application is uh, getting hammered by a lot of bot requests and uh, it's using our resources and uh, it's not good for our web application or any sort of application so we can use this bot control to actually minimize those bot attacks and we'll have uh, control a uh, firewall that is blocking all of these bot controls using this rule that is good so here you can see the pricing and also these are paid the paid rule group so be really careful if you need this service then uh, if you are 100 percent sure then go for it because you are paying what you are using and aws also offers some free uh, rules and most of the time these rules are very good to use the first one is that like admin protection then the amazon ip reputation list so it amazon has a list of ips like if the ip address that is uh, send a request to your web application and those uh, IPs are uh, listed as a, a, list, a blacklist, then uh, this uh, request will be terminated by this uh, rule. That is awesome. And some core uh, rule set and known bad input. Suppose someone is trying to do uh, SQL injection to your uh, website, then uh, this uh, will check, verify the inputs. If it looks like a malicious input, then uh, it won't uh, propagate and it will be blocked by this uh, rule. So a tons of good uh, rules and controls you can see from here. So these are AWS managed beside that uh, we also have some other third party subscription from AWS marketplace. For an instance, like here WAPS top 10 rule set. So it's a complete package and you are getting it. And so you have to subscribe to marketplace so once you subscribe to this service then you can add or integrate this uh, rule with your web acl to protect your uh, resources okay so for the sake of this video i'm gonna go with some uh, free uh, rules that aws offers so uh, just i'm gonna go with this one that is admin protection so once it's uh, here then uh, we have to just simply add rules so cool so now we do have this aws uh, managed rule admin protection rule set the capacity is 100 which is way below than 5000 um so we are good and uh, yeah so the next w section that we need to focus on is that default web acl action for requests that don't match any rules so here we have 
added one rule instead of one rule maybe we are we in production one rule is never enough in prod environment we have to add multiple rules in here so then the question comes to mind that suppose uh, what uh, we are getting a new request and it's not matching to any of the rules so what should be the default behavior so we have two options either allow all requests that are not matching in here or block so if we choose this option it's a, it's a kind of risky because we can't uh, determine like what kind of request our application gonna get so if we block it that means uh, it's a very secure in one way but uh, uh, you will lose a lot of request a lot of requests will be terminated by this rule because it's not matching to any rules and it's getting blocked so the default action I always suggest is allow for any sort of public facing web servers Okay, and uh, if you also want to add custom requests, like add new custom header to the request to pass, you can also do that from here. And once we are okay with everything in here, we can just uh, simply click next and it's a summary. So we can set up the priority of rules. Suppose uh, we want to execute one rule uh, before another one we can set the priority in this section as for this video just we have only one rule that's why uh, this uh, set rule priority doesn't uh, impact us okay now here this is a very good thing so we are also utilizing aws uh, cloudwatch matrix so for this rule it's creating a metric under our cloudwatch dashboard so if we want to do some uh, analysis over our uh, request we can do it from the cloudwatch uh, dashboard using this option and uh, request sampling option so it's always good to enable a request and a sampling option because uh, if we enable the sample request then we'll have a clear idea like what's going on to uh, with our uh, web acl we can see everything from here so i always uh, enable this option so after selecting all the sections now we do have a complete summary of everything in here that is good now if i click create a web acl in here Within few seconds, now we do have our web ACL with uh, appropriate uh, rules. So now we will get a dashboard like this. So here right now, it's not associated to any, any resources like any cloud from distribution. That's why it's empty. But here uh, you can see like how well we are monitoring our uh, uh, controlling our traffic we here we can see all the blocked requests all the allowed requests all sort of function this is a very powerful tool and uh, definitely we need to use it for to protect our aws environment and uh, under rule section here we can see the rule that we added earlier we can add more so it's not uh, that like at the beginning we have to be sure 100 percent what rules you want to use and add those at the very beginning we can always add at any time then the bot control so this is a very cool feature you can add aws web bot control rule groups in here to control any traffic uh, th that are coming from any bots from the web and associated resources uh, it's empty but uh, if we had resources we can always integrate those resources from here and here are some logging kind of stuff so we have pretty much covered aws web acl in uh, in this section okay so after why you see the second thing is that a bot control this is it is also a separate service we can also integrate it with our web so here you can see that for the web acl name that is test acl that we created earlier we can integrate aws wife bot control with it but uh, it costs money because it's a pay as a go service so that's why for the sake of this video we're not uh, integrating it but uh, definitely you could do and it's a very good practice and uh, the next important thing to know about uh, WAF and Shield is that uh, IP set. So let's discuss a scenario that is uh, you have a web server. It's a very secure one or application, okay? Very sensitive application. And you are pretty certain that from which IP address this uh, application uh, need to be accessed. So 
you know exactly which IP addresses uh, should have access to this application and you want to block the rest of the IP addresses. So in here, what you could do, you can create an IP set. In IP set, you can uh, list down all the IP addresses in here. Once you complete the list, then you can integrate this IP set with your web SEO. And uh, under web SEO, you will have your application front end part that could be the cloud front, could be the load balancer. So only if the traffic is coming from that particular IP addresses, then this traffic will be passed to the resources and uh, people can access the application. And uh, for the rest of the IP address from, and the rest of the internet can't access your uh, web application. So isn't it cool? In this way, you are securing, you are making sure that your web resources or your application that you deployed on AWS is very secure. So in this video, we have covered AWS WAF. We have created a web SEL from scratch. We have looked into multiple sections like the rule set, the bot control, uh, tons of stuff. So my suggestion to you at this point would be please uh, open your AWS console, try to create this uh, web SEL, try to integrate it with uh, ALB, with uh, uh, Cloud Font and uh, make sure that things are working perfectly and uh, try to uh, generate some logs that you can uh, watch from your CloudWatch. So if you do this, if you practice this, I'm pretty sure your web application that you build on uh, AWS will be much more secure. If you have any question or concerns related to uh, AWS Wire for any, any sort of service related to cloud, let me know under this comment section and I'm gonna reply you back. And uh, thank you again for watching my videos, it means a lot. If you like this video and you want to learn more about AWS or any other cloud platform or AWS security or cloud security, just uh, uh, like and subscribe to my channel so that you can watch my future videos. I'm planning to upload videos in a very regular basis. Thank you guys for watching my videos and that's all for today. Have a great and wonderful day.